Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Here is where we are. So we are going to do this 10 tips to fast track your voiceover career. Hi guys. I'm Shelly Chenoy. Uh, I've done a lot of things and I'm all over the onlines. So, uh, if you do a quick Google search, you can find a lot of voiceover things, uh, and a lot of personality. We're actually going to talk about social media for that reason. Uh, booking work online just by being there. Uh, it's the bane of my existence and it's also a great source of income for me. I'm not an influencer. I refuse to be <laughs> because I'm like, you know, like, I don't know, like, oh, that look at me using this lip balm. I just am not, I'm not, I don't do it like that to make money, but, um, I do post and share, uh, certain elements of my work online. And, uh, we're going to talk about the importance of social media in a little bit. Okay. Um, okay. So during this seminar, please feel free to find me on the social medias. Uh, if you take an awesome screenshot and you want to share it, tag me in it. Uh, and you can check in to my location. So I'll definitely see you by typing Shelly Chenoy in your search box. So that's fun. Uh, cause I am a location. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and yeah, and if it, and if I love it, if it's not like horribly awful or if it is, uh, I will, I will, I would love to share it and, uh, and get to know you online also. And I'm sure this is going to be ridiculous and please get, be patient with my getting back to you because, um, got a lot of stuff going on. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I want you guys to know just like who I am in general. Um, I, you know, I moved to New York in 2002, uh, with no money, no prospects, no connections of any kind. Uh, I was just like a good old kid from the Midwest doing my best, just guessing, uh, and, um, making it, making it work, you know, along the way. Um, and I did a lot of things, worked in finance, I joined an all-female sketch comedy troupe called The Brothel, uh, kept hustling, ate some Thai food, uh, booked my first voiceover gig. What, what ended up happening is uh, that I, hey, hey, Kyle, can you see my mouse? Oh, yeah, we can see your mouse. Yeah, <laughs> so if I, like, point at something, you can see it. Yeah, yeah, we're all good there. <laughs> yeah, that's so awesome. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> Uh, so I actually was in an all-female sketch comedy troupe and was asked to, uh, we were, at, we were hired to do a producer's roast at MTV. And I specifically was asked to roast Courtney Love. And, you know, I was a comic, this was like 2002, three. And, uh, and I was like, well, I can get her look, right? I just have to make sure I get her voice. And I watched a couple of videos and I was like, all right. Little did I know Courtney Love was gonna be there. Uh, she ended up laughing harder than anybody else at the roast. So I'll take that, you know, as a, as a lovely blessing. Um, and then afterwards I was approached and somebody said, so you're a voiceover artist. And I was like, oh, no, I wish I heard they can pay their rent, you know, cause <laughs> we, were, we were comics. We were all just like absolutely broke, dire broke. Um, which is why actually I didn't want to wait tables, which is why I ended up in finance. Cause I was like, waiting tables is hard and you don't make very much money. And my boyfriend at the time was like, well, why don't you get a job in finance? And I was like, just walk up to finance and ask for a job. And he was like, well, you're an actor, right? <laughs> and I was like, uh, sure. So, uh, eight months later I was working at Citibank and, uh, and I ended up and I like actually started my career there. And that's where I learned how to multitask and actually uh, run a successful, successful business. So a successful business. So that is the best thing that ever happened. Uh, and yeah. And then, you know, uh, I started NYC VO coach, uh, when I had a blip with the SAG after union in 2011, 12, and I couldn't audition. And so my, uh, represent my representatives asked me to start training their other talents so that they booked how I was booking. And it took me about five, six years to get an agent, by the way, I have lived every life there is to live in this industry, including just like the whole agency horrible roller coaster trying to get one and now fully knowing how to do it. And so, uh, so yeah. And then, uh, I booked a whole bunch of stuff and then, uh, and then became really well known in the market and 
ultimately became a professional auditioner. That's what I am. That's what any real professional, well-known voiceover artist will tell you. They are a professional auditioner. And I uh, say that with pride because that's my job. That's my contract agreement with my agents. Audition every single day. And then that's how you keep booking. Um, A lot of people think when you become this very well known that like a lot of people hand you gigs. And some of that's true. But you also have to hustle like the people that my agency also represents are much more well-known than me and I have to go up against them. And so like, that's just, it's just a different level of hustle. It's just a different kind of, kind of thing. Uh, But yeah, that's what I am. I'm a professional auditioner. This is some of the stuff that I'm known for. Uh, It's also a display as to how terribly I put together slides with no spatial awareness uh, but I couldn't, I couldn't fit anything else on the page. I was like, this will do. <laughs> I hope you enjoy that. Um, and yeah, and especially, you know, so a lot of this stuff is great. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other, you know, random stuff in my repertoire, uh, you know, whatever. Currently, this is what I'm doing. I'm in a three uh, feature film deal with a major production house. I'm a resident sketch comedic actor. I was with We The Internet TV. I'm with uh, Loop Res and Canceled Productions now. We've created over like 30 million views. It's fantastic. You can see my favorite stuff on ShellyChenoy.com. With directing, oh, and I'm I'm writing. Uh, and then with directing, uh, um, I'm uh, directing. Uh, so I'm in contract negotiations with a large uh, animation a production company. And I'm also in voiceover negotiations right now on one of the biggest virtual reality platforms there is, uh, which where they would also need, they don't just need a voiceover artist. They need a casting director, a creative director, an audio engineer, um, a copywriter and like whatever else. And so I was like, I do all of that. So uh, yeah, so they're, they're taking an interest in me. And then Currently in 2021, these are, um, as you know, my, the, the campaigns that I've booked in the last nine months. Um, I have two bucket list items on here that I, that I booked this year. Every year I get a bucket list item that I'm super psyched about. This year, being the voice of the United States female gymnastics team was like a dream come true. I was a gymnast when I was a little kid. Uh, I can hold freakishly long handstands. It's, uh, I don't know. I, I was terrible at the vault, but great on the floor anyway. Uh, so I did that when I was a little kid, I, I competed and I loved it. And so being the voice of that team was just like a full circle moment for me. Um, Walmart's cold and flu season. I, I recorded that, uh, yesterday, uh, smart water, Zales, beauty rest, weather Ch- channels, new platform, which is pretty cool. McDonald's McRib. There's a bunch of things that go into this. Heineken is doing a really funny campaign about the Heineken know-it-all. And that's me. Um, they're like, you ever met that girl at a party? And she's like, hi guys. So I made jello. And the thing with jello is that, um, it's actually not cruelty free. And so you have to have it. And she just like fades out. It's like, <laughs> ridiculous. um, uh, and then, uh, New York Lotto is doing some really funny stuff. Realtor.com was really funny. Uh, always discreet, you know, ladies having their periods quilted Northern. Uh, I actually thought it was really funny that it was this last holiday season was McDonald's McRib. And at the same time I was doing McDonald's, I was doing uh, quilted Northern. So it was like McDonald's and toilet paper. And I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> uh, and then my other bucket list item was being the voice of a big award ceremony in Los Angeles. Um, so I finally got to got to say please welcome now to the stage it was so much fun it, to use an announcer voice so that's what i'm working on right now in terms of you know writing directing coaching acting i mean you know coaching i didn't add on here but that's a big part of what i'm doing um but coaching made me a great director which made me a great voiceover artist which made me a better coach, which made me a better director, which made me a better voiceover artist it put me in a cyclical pattern of living inside of the industry and clearly becoming a little beast. Um, and I, I proudly, I run, uh, the most difficult voiceover programs in the, in the market. 
uh, a lot of coaches out there, God bless them, will <laughs> tell you to smile and then they'll leave. And uh, and I will beat you to death until you book your first gig. So uh, you can learn more about that later. I, I think I bring it up later at some point. But if you have any questions. Oh, and look, someone made a gif of me. <laughs> it, it should say, OK, coaches are different. So I thought that was funny because, you know, OK, um, you my lovely little lambs, you're here. Okay. So you're here because you're not booking as much work as you want. You're not sure why you're looking for tips. You want to book more. You don't know what you're doing wrong. You want to make more money. You want to speak more conversationally. You want to improve your mic technique. You don't even know if you have mic technique. You want it to rain dollar bills all over your body. Your body is ready. But uh, but it's not happening or maybe it's happening a little bit and you want to know how you can uh, excel that or maybe you're just brand new. Again, I have some super pros on the line with me um, and also I'm sure some some brand newbies. So uh, everybody hits these lulls and peaks and valleys in their career. Um, And this is this is really important. So this is how most voiceover artists start in the industry. And we're going to, you and I, everyone together, we're going to uh, refer to most voiceover artists as they, because you guys are changing your game right now. But most voiceover artists, they show up to the industry and they're like, hello, I have a lovely and wonderful voice. It's time for you to give me money. And they come because of the super exciting appeal of the lucrative options and all of the amazing audio in the industry. Most voiceover artists end up leaving the industry because of the silence. Okay. So let's just take a moment to watch this man do some (laughs) super high tumbleweed kicks. (laughs) I you gonna? I, this this one gets me every time. <laughs> but anyway, so people leave because of this like crazy silence because no one is sitting there telling them, "Thank you so much for your audition. You did an amazing job. Come back more. Hey, we're thinking about you. We're gonna put you on hold." Nobody says anything. You bust your butt on your auditions. You send them in, and radio silence happens. And then you go back, or they go back, and they keep checking. To say, well, surely they heard my voice. Surely they, they, you just keep hitting refresh. Surely, surely they're going to say something about my hard work, my crazy hard work and what I've, what I went through to get this audition. And that's just not the case. That's never going to happen. So what happens? What happens with these people? Okay. With those people, they are awesome. Why aren't they booking auditions? Let's just take a couple things into consideration, okay? They've never worked professionally on a mic before in their life, never been behind the scenes on any audio production, never have have had any idea how commercials are made, and that matters. No experience, no idea how to beat their competition, no career strategy, audition strategy, mic technique, audio production. They have no idea if they're recording themselves properly and if their levels are correct, which is also a very big deal because if they hear you recording yourself at home and you sound like crap, you're going to be recording yourself for their job. Okay. And that's just a, just just a a no, no. Um, Then, you know, they have no idea what's happening in the advertising agency, uh, in the advertising industry, we'll get back to that. Um, And then they either don't have a demo of any kind or they have a demo that's never booked them work. They have no idea what a great demo sounds like, is supposed to sound like, or if theirs is actually any good at all. But the most important thing as to why they're not booking work, they don't know how to audition. Remember, I said I'm a professional auditioner. That means knowing how to book the job, knowing what the uh, specs are calling for, knowing how the advertising industry works, knowing the vibrancy of the commercial that you're about to go out for, knowing psychologically what the collective subconscious of how most voiceover artists will interpret that copy and how to avoid those pitfalls. 
of falling into that trap and sounding like everybody else, right? Uh, and then they never get themselves a coach, somebody who can introduce them to all of these things for whatever reason, they don't want to spend the money and then they leave. They're gone from the voiceover industry forever. So that's just like what happens. Usually it's like, it's, it's anywhere from three weeks to three months to a year to a year and a half. Uh, you got to be honest with yourself. How hard have you been going at this and what have you not been doing? And, you know, are you, are you done? Are you not going to look for a coach and are you going to be gone? Right. Um, so just a thought, just, just quickly curious. Hey, Kyle, would you get in a plane and fly somewhere if you knew that your pilot never trained? Uh, most definitely not. <laughs> well, but if, if your dog got hurt and you brought your dog to the veterinarian and you found out that it was your vet's first day, meaning it, he was a mailman yesterday, never went to school, just showed up at the vet's office and is about to do surgery on your dog. <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay. So a couple of things here. Um, you have to put yourself in the producer's chair. Okay. If you had 200 auditions to listen to and you needed to cast this job yesterday, would you listen to more than a few seconds of each, each audition, let alone listen all the way to the end? Because man, that audition's going to get good at the very end. And man, I'm rooting for you, buddy. And so I'm going to listen all the way to the end to make sure that like, oh, there it is. He's got it. It's somewhere in there and I have all the time in the world to listen for it. You know what I mean? You've got to put yourself in the producer's chair. Would you, if you had two people up for the job and they both had the most appropriate voice for this commercial and it came down to a couple of things, one of them is potentially going to be your training. Like, have you done this before? Your experience and your training, right? So, uh, so that's just something to consider. If you're ever asking yourself a question about the industry, put yourself on the other side of the table. It's going to be wildly informative for you. Okay. 10 tips to fast track your voiceover career with Shelly Hinoy. Okay. One, get yourself a coach. There's a coach out there for everybody. Important things to look for when you're looking for a coach. Make sure they are currently in the market auditioning and working. Okay. A lot. The, so this is a thing. And I'm just going to throw this out there because there are a lot of great coaches out there, but this is a thing. You get a guy and he's like, and in, in 1994, I had the greatest uh, campaign for uh, Campbell's Soup. I was the voice of Campbell's Soup, and now I'm teaching classes. He's been teaching classes since 1994, but he's not in the industry right now, and he's not auditioning right now. He's not booking work and working with modern-day producers right now or the way in which these commercials are put together right now. So, like, where is your coach? Make sure they know how to guide you in the right now, okay? Student success rates. They matter. Um, all right. So, you, you know, a couple of other things you want to look for. Uh, make sure that they understand how you learn. You might not even know how you learn. Your coach should either ask you or if you do know or if you haven't yet realized how you learn, ask yourself some questions. Take some online quizzes. Find out if you're a visual learner, an audio learner, a hands-on learner an interpretive dance learner. There are all different kinds of ways in which you learn. Your coach should know that so that they can adjust themselves to how uh, you're gonna learn the best from them, right? Uh, look for emotional intelligence. This is kind of a common sense thing for me, but it's also uh, something that I don't think a lot of people think about. Like you, you've gotta get somebody who is gonna pull you out of the bathroom when you're trying to you know, slam dunk your laptop into the toilet because you're just done your microphone out the window, you know, all of this, get somebody that's going to talk you off the ledge. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. And there's, there's just a couple of other things there holding you to the highest standards, making sure, uh, that they teach what you want to know. And, uh, oh, and this one is for me. If you do an inquiry call, keep it under five guys, know what you want to know, make sure it's not on the website, keep it quick for the sanity of your freaking coach. Uh, and then, you know, just bonus points if they love Ted Lasso, because she's that's a good show. All right. Um, learn how to audition, set up an audition strategy, build momentum and hold yourself accountable. We're going to talk about those things. OK, learn the advertising industry. Start paying attention to different demographic targeting on different TV stations at different times of day. 
what commercials play where and when, what commercials play on the radio versus TV versus internet, the way you voice those commercials all do actually sound different. The application sounds different. If your voice is going up against visual instead of uh, pure audio, these things matter when it comes to how you audition. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, and then, uh, you know, this should clue you in also just as a sidebar to what's on your demo reel when it comes to demographic targeting, what you should be voicing, uh, it determines what should be on your demo reel. And lastly, I know that a lot of people out there are super proud that their Pandora doesn't play any commercials. Their YouTubes doesn't play any commercials. Their TVs don't play any commercials. Don't pay money to have commercials removed in your media if you want to be a commercial voiceover artist. Oh, are they too annoying for you to like learn and understand? I listen to commercials on the radio. Sometimes I like try to skip through the music to hear the commercial, to see if I auditioned for it, see what they went for, see what my audition was like. You know what I mean? I compare, I'm constantly analyzing uh, what's going on in the advertising world. So that's just uh, some food for thought there as to your convenience versus what you actually want to do for yourself. Um, Study the field, learn vocal techniques for all styles of commercial, classic conversational promos, anthems, dialogue spots, character spots, poetic spots, testimonial spots. There are so many more kinds of spots. Learn them, pay attention to them, try to identify them when you hear them on the radio or the TV, start to categorize them like, oh, this is that style of commercial. This is what it went for. Um, and then if you did audition for that thing that you're hearing later and it said anything about what style of commercial it was, and then you get to hear it in post-production when it airs, you go, oh, that's what they were going for. And all of these things are going to help you understand specs better at the top of a commercial audition or any audition at all, which is going to help you interpret your copy with far more intelligence and far less guessing. Does that make sense? Is everybody doing okay? Kyle, how's the chop bars, The chop bar is going up. Where I, I saw that I have like 50 <laughs> miss, missed uh, comments, but, yeah. but uh, all right. Um, and then people are raising their hand, but uh, we're going to do questions at the very last, uh, Marlene. We're going to do your questions at the very end, right, Kyle? We're going to do exactly. All right. So we'll do, we'll do the Q and A. So save it till then, Marlene. We'll make sure we get to you. Yeah, write your questions down or else you're definitely going to forget it. Anything else you wanted to add, Kyle? <laughs> All good on my side. I'll, All I'll right, cool. Take on. Okay, so learning how to audition for those styles of commercials, that means actually practice what you learn. So if you do allow commercials to show up on your internet, your radio, your Pandora, your YouTube, whatever, practice it. Hit pause. Repeat what they're saying actually vocalize uh, this, this style of rehearsing different, this technique in rehearsing different styles of commercials works. So like if you hear a breathtaking commercial on the TV, listen to it, pause it, rewind your TV with your DVR if you have that, uh, listen to it again, listen to it again, listen to it again vocalize it, practice it. These are techniques. And then try doing it on your mic. Okay. Cause red, red light syndrome is a real thing. And, uh, oh man, if you're not regularly working on the mic, your nerves are going to be far worse. Uh, the next time you try working on it, that just means if your mic is dusty, your voice is rusty. Are you recording every day or not? Uh, I, I had an acting coach a long time ago, break my heart because I was writing a lot. I was writing this is, and, but this, all these industries are connected. I was writing a lot and he had a, um, this thing that he lived by. And it was just, if you aren't writing every day, you're not a writer. And that's a little harsh, but, um, it's true because, oh my gosh, if you, uh, you know, if, if you aren't recording every day, like for me, I record about, I record like six days a week. Okay. Um, and so I usually don't record on either Saturday or Sunday. One of those days I'm, I like have a breather, but then when I come back after a day off, it takes me like a couple more shakes to be like, and then 
you know, and then I have to, to get back on it again. So uh, don't let your mic sit for too long. Cause if you're not in the regular practice of it, you are getting, you're getting stiff. Um, your audio matters, you guys. Okay. So now you've learned about the advertising industry, the audition market, but your engineering skills are stankopotamus. Okay. iPhone recordings and USB mics. <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm, just, I'm an adult and I use my words. And this is what I have to say about USB mics and iPhones. That's just, that's it. That's all I have to say about it. Um, you need a great condenser mic. Uh, you need a proper audio mixer so you can control your gain. Okay. Gain. Everybody pay attention. So like put your coconut waters down, stop talking to your kids or your cat or whatever. I'm going to show you something. Okay. This is a condenser microphone. Uh, there you go. That's a condenser mic. This is this is one of my old mics. I had a whole bunch of props in here. I, now it's just a prop. Okay. <laughs> this is a condenser microphone. Condenser microphones have something in them. Can you see this? Can you see through? Yep. No, see through. Can you see through it? I know why you can't. Hold on. Hold on. We're going to get really creative here. We're going to turn off all the lights. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tell me if you can see that. There we go. Yep. Yep. We can see awesome. through. Okay. Light and media picture matters. Condenser microphones have something inside of them called a diaphragm. That's what it looks like. That is your target into the microphone. If you are not speaking directly into the target of the microphone, then uh, your voice is off mic. If you're off mic by an inch, you sound like crap. That's just, your, your, your engineer will pick up on it in a second. If you travel off mic for two seconds while you're working, uh, and I'm talking about this, like I'm dead serious. If you are that much off mic, the, the trajectory of your voice has missed the target and you sound off mic, okay? Yeah. Okay. So your audio matters. Okay. So, um, control, being able to control the gain is just one element of knowing how to record yourself at home. And the better, you know, how to record yourself at home, uh, the more likely you are to get snatched up for a job because sometimes, um, you know, these, these commercial auditions go straight to the engineer with just one question. Can you work with this? And the engineer goes, Nope. <laughs> you know, it's because they're off mic, they're distorting their sound, their gain is all over the map, these kinds of things, right? So if you don't know how to record yourself properly um, and engineer yourself properly, yeah, then uh, then you might just be a hot mice, a hot, a hot micey mess, a hot mousey mess. Um, okay. Okay. So your audio, your audition going into pre-production, how are we doing on time? Holy crap. We got to hustle. Okay. So your, uh, your audition going into pre-production means if your audio is not perfect, if the script isn't perfect, if you're fumbling over words, your audition will be gone because in order to be considered for a job, a lot of times, uh, the client, let's say it's like Burger King. This is a little Burger King USB thing. So Burger King, goes to the advertising agency. Advertising agency goes to the client to find the auditions. It could be voices. It could be an agency, whatever. Uh, they scoop up all the talent. They get all the auditions. It goes back to the advertising agency where they listen and, and they pick their like top five selections. They have to be crystal clear, perfect in your audio, crystal clear, perfect on the copy, your interpretation, your vocal technique, your strategy, your, your mic technique, everything has to be perfect. And then what they do is they put your audition into pre-production without you even knowing you, well, you didn't sign up for this. No, that's actually what happens to every finalist in any audition process. If you're, um, put on hold, if you are shortlisted, if you are getting a, you know, a callback or whatever, what that means is they took your audition and they put it to music with the sound effects and they're presenting it to the client. 
So they're showing it to Burger King. Like this finished uh, commercial would sound like this with this voice. This actor would sound like this in the commercial. This actor would sound like this. They give them three or five choices of finished pre-produced uh, commercials. And that's how they decide what actor is going to have the job. So um, I see so many people raising your hands um, and we are like out of time. Okay. Sustainable career strategy. Do it. Uh, decide how many auditions you're doing all day, get to it quickly, uh, what your standard turnaround time is, all of that. Uh, stop holding yourself back and start holding yourself accountable. Trust me, if you were like, oh, but only if I had an extra hour or two during the day, but I can't because I have a full-time job, I have children, I have pets, so whatever it is, wake up earlier, boo. There's always going to be an avenue in which you can do this, but you have to be really real with yourself to know whether or not you're, 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 you're the one in your own way, or if it's life. I have no sympathy for that. You can find a way to make it work or it's just not going to work. Um, having a clean website and clear social media presence matters. Uh, it does. It's just 300 billion people are on social media and that's how people validate talent. That's how they make sure you're not a serial killer, all of that stuff. Um, and then when all that's done, grassroots marketing, that's how I started my career. Cause there were no auditions online. When I started, I was just a wee kid alone in a field. Okay. Wanting to be a voice actor. Okay. And I would go from location to location. I swear, I swear to you and be like, Hey, so, um, I saw you guys, um, online and, uh, or something. I don't know. I really like you guys. And I was thinking this was like 2003. I was a, a baby. <laughs> And I would go to places and go, did you guys by any chance need um, a better voice for your answering service? Do you guys need a voice for any internal videos that you have running online? That's how I booked. That's how I started my own career. No agent would take me. And I was just like, well, better go get my own work. And with no online opportunities, that's how I booked work. It was fantastic. Okay. Um, <laughs> You got to be your own agent, be your own best agent, be the best agent that ever was an agent because you're the one that's holding yourself accountable to hit all these short-term goals, all these long-term goals, and to move your life around to make sure that you're getting it done. Your demo, um, you know, does it make you laugh? Does it make you cry? Does it impress you? Does your demo reel actually demonstrate what you can do, your talent, your capabilities, your sense of humor, and your personality? Because if it doesn't, it's not working. So that's just a thought here. Um, I know I know we have to like get to like questions and all of that, Kyle. Um, but just think about it. Think about it this way. Uh, this is how you can ask yourself if you yourself have a great demo or a demo that's not doing anything for you. Go to the demo and skip around. And if it just sounds like you pretty much talking in a straight line, uh, just kind of just talking and whatever, and there are no actual emotional shifts, humor shifts, vocal shifts, talent shifts, um, um, projection shifts, vulnerability. Uh, if there, if there isn't an actual variety, that's why you're not booking anything. Cause it just sounds like you're talking and are your demographics uh, appropriate? You gotta think about your demographics. Who, who should you be the voice for? Are you properly representing where you should be working on that? Uh, so now you've gotten a coach, you know how to audition. You're great at an editor. As an editor, you've got a career plan, audition plan. You have the best demonstration on your demonstration reel ever. You have a clean website, your social media presence. Your parents are proud of you. Your ex is jealous of you. Now you are a professional auditioner. So that's it. Good job, everybody. Now call your parents. Tell them you're the best <laughs> seminar attendee ever. I'll back it up. So many people <laughs> have raised their hand. I think that, so that's it. Uh, so I will go to the stop share because I know how to do that now. Uh, we do have a quick segment there that I do want to get to in regards to, uh, just the live script reading. Um, so we do have two participants that have, uh, go ahead and, uh, and volunteered for such. So I'm hoping that Rich is here. Rich, are you here? Let's see, Rich. Ooh. All right. Rich, I hope you're ready to go. I'm going to bring you up on the screen. So uh, here we go. Get ready, Rich. Unmuting there. Beautiful. There oh, what's up, Rich? Shelly, that was a great presentation. I loved it. 
Thanks. <laughs> I'm I need a new shirt. I sweat right through it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just full of fun information, Rich. How are you? I'm fabulous. I started doing voiceover work when I was 17. I'm 63 now. I took 20 years off to be an adult. I'm having a tough time getting back in. I've done a thousand auditions for voices.com. Uh-huh. I've been shortlisted 40 times, haven't booked yet. I do have a coach, Dorian Elliott. Um, I have an agent, but I'm not booking much. Huh. Okay. Uh, do you want to talk about your demo reel? Sure. Um, I'd, I, I'm a, I'd play it for you if I knew how to do that on uh, Zoom. That's okay. I got it right here. Runs deep. Bourbon runs deeper. Just going to skip around. Blood runs deep. Imagine illnesses, which can cause severe liver. Or if you take ACE inhibitor medicine, registered nurse, PTA press, 125 years. By the study show that children who have role models are. Sure. Can you find the cats? Find. I like the cat at the end. Um, so, Rich, um, you tell me, do you, is that, do you think that properly represents your talent? I do. Okay. To me, my darling, it sounds like you're talking in a straight line. I would imagine that if you are 63 and you're a boss and you're brave enough to like come up here and just be like, what's up? I'm rich. Right. That there's a lot more personality going on than what's being showcased in that demo. Because to me, that's what I call reading in a straight line. You have, I listened to this last night, right? Cause they, they happened to send me your name. And I was like, let me just, let me just Google this guy real quick. I was like trying to put this presentation together. And then I was like, let me see what Rich is all about. By the way, make the text on your website bigger because I have perfect vision, but I was like, what is this? So like, just, just broaden it a little bit. Um, and then, uh, you know, I, listening to your demo, I was like, well, I mean, he's got a super charming voice. I love your texture, but I want to see performance. I actually want to see you play around with it. Right. Like we got to get uh, like one, one character spot up there for you. One, like break your heart spot, something where you're doing something technically proficient. I would love to see that. Right. Um, Rich, do you want to read copy? Sure. <laughs> uh, tell me what, what style of commercial would you like to um, work on? So I was an announcer for 20 years, uh, an announcer commercial, a narration commercial. Um, all right, let's have you give that a shot whenever you're ready. Give me a little direction. How, how upbeat, how. Okay. Well, um, this is what I encourage you to do, right? So when you're auditioning from home, you don't have any direction. All you have are the specs. Okay. But you have been told that this is a promo because it's listed at the top of a page. Your specs are cool. Uh, soul concert promo, radio voice, energetic. That's what you get. Gotcha. This season at Madison Square Garden is the season not to be missed. This spring, be sure to get your tickets to see superstars like Katy Perry, Beyonce, Hozier, and Childish Gambito. Hurry fast before tickets sell out. Today only. Get special select seating by calling Z100 Studio Line at 1-800-242-0100 or online at thegarden.com with Z100's discount code Z2019. Offer expires at midnight tonight. Madison Square Garden and Z100 putting the New York City's hottest tickets right in your hands. Cool. Um, let's say putting New York City's hottest tickets instead of, instead of putting the, right? So a lot of times if a copywriter makes a mistake, don't read the mistake, right? So there's always a little tricky true in there. Um, now, if I were producing this promo spot, uh, and you were my talent, I would say uh, I would need your voice because you have a deep, rich voice, right? And there's a, there's a lot of texture going on in there. I'm going to ask you to do this. Um, if I were to put that, what you just did into post-production, you would be swallowed whole by the music. They're going to be like, boom, boom, boom. And you got to come through like a crazy crystal sharp radio producer. So actually, if your uh, projection on this commercial was at like a level three in projection and um, energy, 
I want you to put it at a nine or a 10. You're going to borderline shout. So I want you to back away from your computer, just a hair, just a hair, right? Give it to me. Just lay it on. Great. I need you to put the copy back up because for some reason it disappeared. Can you see it? I cannot. Let me try. Should I would say I can see it on my side. You should be able to see that. Yeah, sorry, I just hit. Oh, there we go, Madison Square Garden. Oh, okay, perfect. Okay. <clears throat> bigger, even bigger. All right, go for it. This season at Madison Square Garden is the season not to be missed. Okay, so Rich, I'm going to stop you. Okay, so you're starting in a range of voice that is actually too low for you to be able to achieve these specs. What I want you to try is don't trap yourself in the bottom half of your register. So start a little bit higher, start up, uh, like not up over the top of your head, but right through the center. So instead of this season, cause you're trapping yourself down here, there's no way to project that. Okay. So I want to hear this season start like an octave higher. <laughs> All right, let's try it. Here we go. Yeah. This season at Madison square garden is the season not to be missed this spring. Be sure to get your tickets to see superstars like Katy Perry, Beyonce, Hozier and childish Gambino. Cool. So Rich, I'm going to, I'm going to stop you. Awesome. Awesome. Here's what I need you to do. So if I said, make it punchy and I want you to borderline shout this, can I hear you bring what your energy level at a four to like, I want you to double that Sh shout it, make it punchy because when your inflections are like, is the season not to be missed? That's like, that's like a dad spot kind of voice, right? <laughs> okay. I want you to like punish your listeners. Okay, make it punchy, make it sharp, give it right out. All right, here we go. This season at Madison Square Garden is the season not to be missed. This spring, be sure to get your tickets to see superstars like Katy Perry, Beyonce, Hozier, and Childish Gambino. Hurry fast before tickets sell out. Today only, get special select seating by calling Z100 Studio Line at 1-800-242-0100 or online at thegarden.com with Z100's discount code code Z2019. Cool. So Offered I'm going to stop you right there, right? So a lot of times, by the way, there's always years in these things. Z2019, right? Um, but what I want you to do is just work on the first line for me. Okay. <laughs> Can you do this? This season at Madison Square Garden, I'm a radio DJ. This season at Madison Square Garden is the season not to be missed. Good. Tighten that up. Make it faster. This season at Madison Square Garden is the season not to be missed. Now, I want you to take that a little bit higher and a little bit louder, right? Because you're still coming in really comfortable. <laughs> this season at Madison Square Garden is the season not to be missed. Good. Yeah. So ultimately, if you take it from like this season at Madison Square Garden is the, you know, like I would give you, you know, like Jim Mullins, who's in the audience here. One of my, I'd give you a rich Jim Beam commercial. You know what I mean? Like a smoky, <laughs> mysterious Sam Elliott kind of spot. You know what I mean? Well, that's um, why my demo starts off with a bourbon commercial. Yeah, of course. Of course. That's perfect demographic targeting. Right. But if you want to come across as a, as a radio DJ, as a, as a promoter, it's got to be punchy, loud, borderline aggressive, right? This season at Madison Square Garden with power, with color, with flavor, with personality. And it's got to be punchy, sharp, and bright, right? Shelly, so helpful. Thank you very much. You're amazing, Rich. I know we have to keep going, right, Kyle? Yeah, yeah. But hey, Rich, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you, man. It's, uh, it's a lot to come up here and do in front of everybody. You did a great job there. I love to see too. And yeah, you've got such a rich voice. Uh, I really enjoy it. It was easy. I only had you two guys, right? No oh, there we go. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, we're, yeah we're, we're, we're the only ones here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love the perspective. There we go. <laughs> Thanks, Rich. I really appreciate it. And uh, and I'll go ahead and uh, let's get you back to a guest there. Um, best of luck and happy auditioning, Rich. Okay, I'm here now. Yes, I don't oh, know what perfect. happened. I just clicked on the link she sent me. <laughs> no, hey, my name is Jennifer, Jennifer not Lindsay. <laughs> What's my up, Jennifer? Is my colleague, so <laughs> that explains the loss there. <laughs> Jennifer, we have like 30 seconds. How are you? Doing? Okay. <laughs> How's your uh, website? Oh, a work in progress. I am very new to voiceover. I'm a singer and a voice teacher and performing in musical theater my whole life and just starting to get into the 
voiceover world and see how it is. What nice. It's like. Uh, what would you, uh, so we're going to give you like three shots to, to hit a commercial already. Uh, what kind of commercial do you want to work on? I'm thinking like young mom, something like that. Like young mom. Okay. Hold on. Give it a shot. All right. We love babies, not those kinds of babies, these kinds of babies. And if you're not sure how to get your baby from this to this, then turn to thebump.com with tips on everything baby, from easy baby food recipes to do-it-yourself baby costumes for Halloween to answering hundreds of medical questions online by registered pediatricians. You've got questions? We've got all your answers. Visit thebump.com today. Okay, super. Okay, so charming. Uh, the the spec at the top, right? Charming? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I love that it was warm and I love that it was sweet. But then we have practical and charming and we're just going to play around with that a little bit. Here's what I want you to do. We're just going to make a quick adjustment. I want you to tighten that up. I want you to uh, react to the sound effects that you're seeing there um, and give this a shot, right? So uh, if we're trying to switch up your tone and your pacing and your color, every time you see punctuation, I want you to switch notes just a little bit, right? You're a singer. Okay. Okay. So every time you see a comma, start on a new note, make music for me. Okay. Give that a shot. Okay. We love babies. Not those kinds of babies, these kinds of babies. Okay, and, wait. If you're not- and really quick, uh, in commercial copy, they always give like negative comparisons. Don't sound like you hate babies. <laughs> okay. Keep the entire thing uh, really positive and, and even quicker still. Okay. We love babies. Not those kinds of babies, these kinds of babies. And if you're not sure how to get your baby from this to this, then turn to the bump.com with tips on everything baby from easy baby food recipes to do it yourself, baby costumes for Halloween to answering hundreds of medical questions online by registered pediatricians. You've got questions. We've got all your answers. Visit the bump.com today. Good. Okay. So some of your inflections at the ends of sentences, you want to make sure that you land those, right? So that nothing swoops up like a Kardashian. All my students are like, yes, the inflections, right? (laughs) You got to land uh, the ends of all of those, but overall solid second read, solid second read. Um, When then just really quick at the end of commercials, when you visit the bump.com today, you always got to make it sound like the end of the commercial, right? You don't want it to be like, Visit the bump.com today. Okay. It's like land it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you always got to land the end of the commercial. So it's like, visit the bump.com today. Cool. Boom. Great. Cause that's your call to action. You got to mm-hmm. tell them what to do. So if your call to action is floating in the wind, visit the bump.com today. Then it's like, wait, what, what, you know what I mean? It's got to come through a little bit more commanding at the end of a, end of a spot. Right. Yeah. Um, I know that that was only two adjustments. You're a murderer. Can I ask you a question? Sure. This is a little improv really quick. Okay. Are you sing like eight or six bars of something really quick. What your style? Favorite, well, your favorite thing, uh, cute Broadway, oh, Broadway, or, oh, or sweet Broadway, just like eight bars. Um, Hmm. Your favorite thing. Okay, go. Jenny's afraid of water. I mean, she swims so well and still she's afraid of water. So she won't go near the sea. Not me. And David's afraid of crying. I mean, he tries to hold it in. But he's afraid of crying. And he can look at me with tears stuck in his eyes. And I don't know why. That was a random yeah. song. Yeah, wow. great. Um, I'm afraid of anyone that tries to sing next to you because <laughs> Christmas, you're a murderer. Well done. <laughs> well done. Love musical theater actors. You have great ears. Good job. Thank you. I was about Thank to you say, very much. You, you killed that, Jennifer. Really, really great uh, reads. And again, no, it's not an easy thing. So uh, thanks for uh, your courage of stepping up and volunteering. And, and thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Happy auditioning. Bye.
So she has a great voice, man. I like scoped her out last night and I was like, oh my God. (laughs) Her voice is incredible. It's amazing. She's amazing. Okay. Um, okay. Now we're going to go on. We've got Q&A section. Um, I know we're a couple minutes over, so hope you guys are still all around for that. And uh, sorry about that little ring there. Okay. So with the Q&A, if you've got any questions, um, feel free to pop them down in the Q&A spot. I'm going to try to get to as many as I can um, because we are a little bit over time. Don't know how many we'll be able to get to. If uh, we don't get to your question, feel free to reach out to Shelly. Um, you can send her uh, an email uh, or you can just visit her website where you'll be able to find her contact information as well. Um, NYCVOCoach.com. That's right. Right, Shelly? Yeah, NYCVO Coach, baby. All right. So, yeah, feel um, free to hit her up there. Um, we'll try are we to get- gonna a- Are we going to answer any questions? Oh, yeah, we're going to get some. Okay, okay. let's see. <laughs> so, um, do you have any advice um, that would differ for somebody that's targeting animation versus commercial? Do I have advice that would differ for somebody that's that's going out like, for you, animation versus commercial? Yeah, like, do you yeah. think a lot of the things that are applicable are transferable uh, in just kind of how you, how you target that? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Uh, if you haven't trained in animation, uh, then, um, then you're guessing, learn how to create characters, learn clean character splits, learn how to create from zero, um, make them different, make them pop. You know, uh, you got to learn when and where to improvise. It's all about discipline, like learning tricks, like wallas and whatever else, but then using discipline to know when to use them. So you've got to have an audition strategy there also. It's it's like learn everything in the world of commercial and then get into animation because it's a commercial industry. Uh, learn all of your mic technique there and then get into animation so that you can excel, truly. Awesome, awesome. Um, and you talked about mics. Um, Jody here is wondering, how do you feel about a dynamic mic like Shure SMB7? Oh, the Shure's good. It's yeah. a it's a condenser, right? That I don't know. I'm not a I'm not. Yeah, a big... I think the the Shure is a condenser. You just need a great condenser. Okay, and perfect. I'm, I'm, I feel like I remember how that one sounds, and it's pretty solid. Yeah, uh, it's a dynamic. Oh, it's mic. a dynamic mic. Yeah. Yeah, I'd have to hear it to know for sure. Can you control the gain and the settings and and all of the technical stuff in it? Yeah, uh, Robert's saying it's famous for radio announcers. Guys, that doesn't make a difference. (laughs) (laughs) Great. Yeah, the microphone I have right here is famous for, you know, making me the voice of McDonald's. It doesn't doesn't (laughs) matter like what kind of work you're doing on it. You just have to make sure that like, you know how to produce it, right? It's good for radio announcers. I heard somebody the other day that was like, should I get this kind of mic? Because I heard it was good for women. (laughs) No, that doesn't, it doesn't, you know, just know how to use your, use your mic. Who else do we got? Who else do we got here? All right. Let's see. Let's see. Um, if you were to recommend a good brand of mic that is on the cheaper side of things, what brand would you recommend? Email me and ask me for a list of recommended, uh, recommendations. There you go, Jim. I think it was one of your ex students, Jim. Is that Mullins? Yeah. <laughs> Jim, where are, you, where are you at? Mullins. Oh my God, you need a mic. I was going <laughs> to recommend you for a job um, actually. And then I was like, I better check in with Jim to see if he set up his equipment eight years ago. <laughs> so reach out to <laughs> Shelly, Jim. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my God. Jim, call me. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Um, how do you feel about post-production um, softwares? Um, like, would you, for somebody who is beginning, um, do you think they are fine using audacity or should they immediately invest in something like Adobe audition? Oh, uh, I think a lot of my students work on audacity. Audacity is great. GarageBand is great. Um, I record and produce a ton of stuff and I use GarageBand. 
Uh, mm -hmm. If you're just like trying to figure out Pro Tools out there by yourself because you spent $400 on it, people go to college for Pro Tools. So like roll your sleeves up, you know, <laughs> but like, are you designing video games? Like if not, then like GarageBand, Audacity, those should be great. Just learn how to use them. Yeah, we, uh, that's kind of our stance on it as well. They've got everything you need there in, in regards to the basics. Keep things mm -hmm. getting too uh, confusing, uh, like Pro Tools can it's a rabbit hole. So <laughs> yeah, be ready. Mm -hmm. uh, is there, um, let's see, sorry, I'm just trying to find one more. Um, oh, here's a good one. Um, Shelly, do you produce demos? Well, yeah, uh, the best yeah. in the industry. There you go. Reach out Shelly. And then the other question that came along with that is how do I become your student Shelly? <laughs> uh, oh that's so cute that's so cute uh, yeah I'm an audio producer I've produced I've put you know like 25 commercials on the radio um mm -hmm. and like just sold stuff that I've written and produced myself and voiced uh just always like from day one of arriving in New York and being like I don't think I want to wait tables just thinking outside the box and becoming an audio producer was uh was a huge advance for me um, and, uh, yeah, all this talk about demos, uh, I, I talk about from, from, you know, 11 years of producing original demos. I write all my own content, produce all my own content. I work with one of the head audio engineers from Nickelodeon studios, uh, every week. Um, we've been creating and producing stuff for like for actually like eight years now before that it was another amazing producer I worked with him for like five years um and uh yeah uh and then uh, you know if you if you guys write me like go to NYCVO coach if you write me an inquiry letter or if uh you just want to say what's up or whatever just give me just give me a little time to get back to you <laughs> <laughs> but to say she's busy and and I'm sure there's going to be quite a few uh messages coming your way so uh definitely yeah, just be a little patient there, but she will get back to you. Um, but we are a little bit over time there, so I, I want to wrap it up there. Um, shout out to Shelly and her website. If you do want to reach out to Shelly, ask her any questions, become one of her students, get a demo produced, um, nycvocoach.com. Um, go check it out. And uh, until next time, I'll, uh, I'll see you guys then. But uh, Shelly, thank you so much for uh, spending the hour with us. And thank you, everybody that, uh, that joined us. Thanks, you guys. And just a special shout out to all the NYC VO Coach students I see blowing up the chat. <laughs> Hello to all of you. I freaking, you guys are hilarious and I love you. And I saw a question come in that didn't get answered. And I'm going to answer oh. it really quickly. We have 10 Go seconds. We're signing off. We are signing off. We got 10 seconds and we're signing off. And I'm going to answer this question that I saw come in from Mark who wanted to know how Lucy was doing. <laughs> She's doing great. She's sleeping like a champion. She looks so sleepy. <laughs> that's oh. Lucy, everybody. She's awesome. So that's it, guys. Oh, I love it. I love it. Well, Lucy, thank you for joining us as well. <laughs> is Lucy at a 10 right now. Yeah. She, she is just, just wild. Oh, she's tuckered right out. She's just snuggling right in. Yeah, she's oh, oh, yeah. National Dog Day. Happy National Dog Day. I forgot Happy about. National Dog Day every day. <laughs> yeah, every exactly. day is dog day. <laughs> exactly. My little guy, he's he's passed out on the floor next to me. So, well, I would go I, get him, Kyle. Go get him. <laughs> we have 10 seconds left. There are no rules he's, here. I can't just pick him up. He's 110 pounds. <laughs> go get him. Get him. I believe in you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Okay, I need to make room to get this big guy in there. Oh. 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 oh, thanks. Can you see? There we go. <laughs> this is hilarious because you just turned into a black blob. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. No. Oh my uh, gosh, what kind of dog is he? He's a Rottweiler. Oh my gosh. So he's a great big, great big 100 town boy, 110 pound boy. I know, I just woke you up. Sorry, bud. That's amazing. <laughs> you're, in, you're in big trouble yeah. as you're yeah, being so. punished right now. Oh my God, he's so cute.
He, he said, that's why he was hard to pick up. I was like, I don't know how I can pick him up. I'm so impressed. Good job, Kyle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's, he's pretty big. So, but he, he, he likes to dog a lot when we're on the couch. His tongue is taking up my entire screen. That's yeah, he's a big boy. All right. All right. Now we go. There we go. He's not scared. All right. There we go. So National Dog Day. Happy National Dog Day, everyone. Happy National Dog Day, everybody. And uh, yeah, reach out to Shelly if you've got any further questions. mycbocoach.com. Until next time, we'll see you guys all then. Bye, guys.